Look at Galatians 4. Now, I want you to see, oh, you old foolish Galatians, you were, you, you know, you went back and under the law, but now he's going to Galatians 4. Now, I say that the heir, who is the heir? Whom he hath appointed heir of all things. The brightness of his glory expects the image of his person. Who is the heir? Why would he be an heir? Is that his humiliated state or glorified state? Humiliated state. Because he is God. All things are his to begin with. But why does, it, why does he want to be an heir? So he can have some joint heirs with him, bringing many sons unto glory. So there's an heir. The heir. It didn't say the heirs. It that the heir, as long as he is a child. Child. Differeth nothing. From a servant. No difference at all. Amen. Though he be the son of God. Though he be Lord of all. And that's a little L-O-R-D. That's master of all. That ain't capital L-O-R-D. That's a small L-O-R-D at on A. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. In other words, he's talking about a father and a son relationship here. Until, as long as he is a son, a servant, then he ain't going to have no inheritance. It ain't going to be given him, and he ain't going to work in it as long as he's a child until he is full grown. Is that true? Is that what it says? He differeth nothing from a servant. Nothing. Brother Don, read verse 1 and 2 of Galatians 4, verse 1 and 2. Go ahead. Go ahead. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. All of us, go ahead, verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. What is, he, what is he telling us? As long as he, as a servant, a child, a servant, Though he be Lord, he's under governors and tutors until the fullness of time come. And when he does, God sent forth his son, how? Made of a woman, made above the law, no, and under the law, under governors, under tutors. And he will have to be obedient in all things, all things of this land, all things of that law. So the spirit, there is a, is a spirit moving? No, it's latent, laid back. It's made of no reputation. None. Therefore, Jesus ain't going to heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devil, do nothing all the days of his youth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah unto God. So, what does it mean? It means that Jesus Christ, God Almighty, the Lord himself, the Lord of glory. Hallelujah will make himself of no, no, no reputation, veiled in flesh. And how much of this is, is flowing through Jesus right now? When will it flow through? Until it comes the fullness of time for that heir to take his. And that ain't going to happen until he has shifted the law, until he shifted that law in under Melchizedek ministry of the high priest. What does a high priest work in? The king rules the people. What does a high priest rule in? Matters of the law. So when's this high priest going to start working? When he takes on the priesthood, which is what you said, the Melchizedek priesthood at age 30, because the high priest takes his office at age 30. So during the time that Jesus... All the way up into age 30. 
that spirit of God will remain latent, laid back. Latent means no move, just sitting there, not dormant, not moving. Why? Because he's working as a man. And this is in the likeness of sin, full flesh. And for sin, God can't. They don't have nothing to do with sin. Well, then how can God do it? Because the woman was deceived. And Adam all die. Case closed. You ain't born again, you die. But there was hope for that woman. But as soon as her seed, her embryo, that, uh, that egg, Max, with that spermatosa, that, that seed of Adam is dead. But the seed of the woman is still alive because in the day that you eat thereof, Adam, you will surely die. But the seed of the woman, the seed of the woman, still, she will be saved. She, through childbearing and her seed, which is Christ. So there's hope for the woman in Adam all die. Case closed. That's it. <laughs> you, if you're after Adam and after his own kind, you're dead. Let the dead bury the dead. So right here, Christ literally is made of a woman in under the law. And under the law means that this flesh right here is an Adam what? After the fall. In the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. Romans 8, 3. So Jesus Christ in the days of his flesh will be a man just like you and just like me under governors, under tutors until... The fullness of time. Well, why would God do this? Well, when the fullness of time come, God sent forth his son, made a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. He became one of us. The law was given that sin might appear exceedingly sinful. What did God come as? In the likeness of sinful flesh. Not in the likeness of sinless flesh, but in the likeness of sinful flesh. Can I get an amen? amen. Now, we're going slow. I realize that. Now, why? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. We're not the only begotten son, but an adoption. Okay, verse 5 and verse 6, and because you're a son, God has sent forth the spirit of a son to your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Read verse 7, Brother Don. Therefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son then, an heir of God through Christ. Oh. Wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So through him becoming an heir, becoming a man, just like us. Now, I want you to take a look then at Hebrews. Now we're going to go to Hebrews 10 about the flesh and milk, and then we'll backtrack some. Is that okay? Now, the book of Hebrews, God in sundry times, divers manner, speaking to the prophets, speaking to the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by son. His is written in italics, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. What did we just read? An heir, though he be an heir and Lord, yet he's under governors and tutors until the fullness of time. Okay? And that makes us an heir, a son, as an adoption, according to the adoption. For the whole creation moaneth and groaneth and pain to be delivered into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. And not only they, but we also ourselves, which have the first fruit of the spirits, do groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. Okay, the adoption is when we have our bodies redeemed, taken on uh, in uh, immortality. If you'll take a look at Hebrews, the 10th chapter, we're going to talk about the law. Is Jesus above the law in and under the law as a man? Is he under the law? All right. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things. Who's the very image? 
That's it. He's the image of the invisible God. He's the express image of his person. He is the brightness of his glory. Can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there too perfect. So he's wanting a per perfect, a bride under perfection. Jesus presenting himself and to himself a perfect mirror image of himself. A glorious church without spot and without blemish. Underline the word perfect there. It is teleo, T-E-L-E-I-O-O, -O, which means to make perfect. For this, for then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sins. Now, watch here. Body, soul, and spirit. Body is flesh and blood. No problem there. Soul, what, give me the soul. What is that? Thank you. Mind, will, emotions. How about your imagination? How about your intellect? All these are in the soul realm, and that's where the man has to have his own what? Will. So when you look at your face in the mirror... And you say, self, where is yourself? In your spirit? In your body? Or is it in your soul? The soul of man, isn't it? That's where your human intellect is, your imagination. So that will will even go, it'll either pivot with that of the flesh or with that of your spirit, one of the two, whichever way that you decide to go. That is the pivot point, whether you obey the flesh or the spirit. Well, Jesus, but in those sacrifices, it said it would not make the conscience pure. But they would not have ceased to be offered because, because why? That the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. Where is the conscience? Well, communion is in the spirit of man. Where's conscience? In the spirit. So if you have your conscience purged from dead's works, is it your mind? You said Jesus come into my heart, or have you had uh, a circumcision in that spirit? The conscience there has to be purged. How do you purge that spirit? With the blood of Jesus Christ, through the operation of Christ by baptism. Then the conscience, if it had made the comers there too perfect, then the conscience would have been purged once and for all. But that's not the case in under the law, and under the law, and under the law, and under the law, and under the law, because the law was given that sin might appear exceedingly sinful, but where there is no law, sin is not imputed where there is no law. Paul said, I was alive. Once, without the law. Then, the law came, sin revived, and I died. Why? Because when you have a knowledge of the law, now sin is imputed. Now watch this. Is Jesus made in under the law? Is he? Turn that air off. Is he made in under the law? Is he made in under the law? Is he in the likeness of sinful flesh, not sinless flesh? How can God then embody a man in the likeness of sinful flesh? Because he's made himself of no reputation. God ain't moving. It's veiled. It's veiled. It's veiled. There's a curtain up there. There's a separation. It's veiled. Well... God took upon him that form. Yea, he did. But it was veiled. In whom is hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It's veiled in a body of flesh. Amen. Him hath God the Father sealed. That's a Greek word, sphrexo, S-P-H-R-I-G-Z-O, which means to hide or to secret. Hidden. Sealed. 
Something sealed, you got to break that seal. Him hath God the Father seal. Well, let's take a look at that. Well, verse 3, but in those sacrifices, there's a remembrance again of sins every year. Did Jesus take away the sins of the world or the sin? Why? Because Adam, by his disobedience, brought forth sin, and sin brought forth death. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. When Jesus died on the cross, the sin of the world was taken away. Case closed. It changed everything in the cosmos. The cross made it happen because that's the government of God. It changed the heavens and the earth. It changed everything because he took away the sin on the cross. However, man still sins. And in Daniel 9, 24, there will be an end of sins when the Lord destroys the wicked out of the earth. And makes a reconciliation for iniquity. All the ones that are out of the mark and missing the mark, he's going to straighten up or they're going to die. Now take a look at this. Now here's, here's, where, here's where we're going we're to cut the difference between a lot of denominations. For it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. In other words, man sins, he makes an action on that sin, and when he does, uh, it becomes sins, uh, a multitude of sins, uh, the body of the sins of the flesh. Watch this. Wherefore, look at verse 5, when he cometh into the world, who comes into the world? When he cometh into the world, who? The first begotten. But somebody said he ain't gotten yet when he bringeth the first begotten to the world. Remember I said, if I, if I say my wife when she was six years old had a bicycle wreck and skinned her knee. Somebody said, Brother Beard, that ain't so because you wasn't married to your wife at age six years old. But it's still attributed to her because she's my wife now when she was six. This is what we're talking about in the Son of God in humiliation and glorification. Because it's still him. When he brings the first begotten to the world, what's that? The, the only begotten God. <laughs> Do you understand the only begotten son is the first begotten from the dead? Begotten, born. The only begotten, monogonase. So it's the only born God. Before me, there was no God formed, Isaiah 43, 10. After me, there will be no God formed after me because God took upon him the form of a servant. He formed himself a body of flesh, and that flesh was God Almighty, veiled in flesh, in the Son of God in his humiliated state. Now, take a look at verse uh, 6 there, I mean 7. In burnt offerings and sacrifice, for thou hast no pleasure. When he bringeth first God, he saith, Sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. Look up here. Sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me or me. Look at me. Sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not. But a body thou hast prepared me, the Spirit of God. Now you better see that. There's not us, it's me. In the volume of the book, I come to do thy will, O God, for a body thou hast prepared me. If you don't see that, you're going to bust hell wide open. Well, I've asked Jesus to come into my heart. Watch it here. Above, when he said, sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither has pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then, verse 9, saith he, lo. Watch that low. Where's that other low? 
Lo, behold, going to all the world, teaching them to observe all things which I have commanded you, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And lo, I, God, am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. What shows lows? Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that, may he, that he may establish the second. The first man, Adam, was under the law, brought forth sin, and sin conceived brought forth death. Now he gave the law that sin might appear exceedingly sinful. Now he said, I got a second one here. I'm going to remove that first one. I'm going to make an end of sin. Behold the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. Watch this. He said, then see, I come to the devil of God. He taketh away the first that it may establish a second. What? The law of, the, of, the, of Moses, the natural law, is going to be taken away and in what? Not done away with, but literally fulfilled and made the law of the spirit of life. So Jesus at the cross took a natural law with natural people with natural boundaries and literally died on that cross and moved the law from a natural law to a spiritual law. The law of the spirit of life, where? In Christ Jesus, which is the law of liberty, where? Because the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It's the law of liberty, which we all will be judged by. So Jesus, in the days of his flesh, will have no move of the Holy Ghost in him at all. Even though it has the spirit of God without measure, it's not moving. Why? Because this man in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin will have to obey in all things made and under the law until the time that he has a right to, and will be literally anointed with the Holy Ghost. In other words, the spirit that he is will become active. Do you understand that? This ain't God the Son, folks. The Son of God. Watch this. The Son, I'm on, I need a blue one here. I'm on, the blue is heavenly. The Son, if he's a Son, he has to have the same spirit as God. Look at me. You in the back, look up here. I ain't sitting here bumping my gums together for nothing. That Son of God has the same spirit of God. But it didn't say God the Son, it said the Son of God. Well, it's of God, that holy thing that is born of thee is of the Holy Ghost. Of God is the flesh. It's not God the Son. That would make that flesh divine. It's the Son of God. Which speaks of the flesh, and how much glory does he have when he comes to this world? Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. They worship him. He has the Spirit of God without measure, but it's late and it's laid back. He's not moving. He will not work a miracle until he's age 30. It doesn't change his identity. It's this, this is not going to move so he can work as a man just like us, emptied out of glory. That's the reason he made himself of no, not some, no reputation. Okay, follow with me here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow through this here. Uh, he said, Lo, I come to that of God, for he take away the first, that he might establish the second by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Why? Because he's a great high priest. That he would offer it once and once and for all. Not several times, because this is the everlasting blood of the covenant. Which will purge this conscience from dead works to serve the living God. When we have the blood applied to the heart, which is always, the blood is, is never applied without water. Now, and every priest stands daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. So all the blood, how many gallons, how many thousands upon thousands upon thousands of gallons of blood was shed with the blood of bullocks, goats, rams, and cetera, all through history, there with the Jew in Israel, and not one drop of that blood took away a sin at all. But it was a charge card to charge it up, and there for one year, and then there was a remembrance again of those same sins. 
It was a charge card, if you will. It just pushed it forward for a season, and then there was a remembrance again. Yeah, you hadn't washed it away. It's still there. I pushed it forward away for a season, but there it is again because it will not wash away one sin and all the sins that humanity has created and committed. Well, it said, uh, now watch this. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering offer times the same sacrifice which never take away sins. But this man, 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 man. Did it say God, man? Man. This man. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Is that an S-E-T or S-I-T? It's an S-A-T, which is past tense of sit, sit, sat. So is that, is that a little state of glory or is that a position? What's the difference between S-E-T and S-I-T, Brother Don? Put it in the microphone. I can't hear you. Sit is a position. It's something for us. S-I-T. He sat. S-A-T. Sat down. That's a position. Not for him. For us. It's set there for us. But Jesus is set down with, S-E-T, down with the Father where? In his throne, Revelation 3.21. The S-I-T, S-A-T, where he's seated, S-E-A-T-E-D, a seat, that is for us. Seated until his enemies be made his footstool. For he must reign. Who's he? He must reign until all enemies are put under his feet. Hold your finger there just for a minute. Hallelujah unto God. And come back over here to the book of Romans. And he says over there in Romans 5. Now just hold on a minute and we'll get to, we'll get to the shout part in a minute. Take a look over here in verse 11. And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have received the atonement. Wherefore, as by how many? Verse 12, as by one man, everybody say man, by one man sent into the world, sent into the world in death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was, not, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, day, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of what? One. Many be dead. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by what? One man. God has to become a man. How does he do it? He makes himself of no reputation. Not some. Totally emptied out of glory. No glory. No glory. None. Not a nip, niche, nil, none. Not a no glory. You mean God became a man just like you and just like me in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin? That's exactly what we're saying. God himself revealed himself, the Father embodied in flesh is the Son of God. The Son of God is the embodiment of the Father. He is God manifest in the flesh. Not the Son of God manifest in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16. How much glory? None. He's made himself of no reputation. Canoed means emptied out of glory. Why? To become that man. So by that one man, for if through the offense of one man be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, 
so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. There we go. Verse 17, for if by one man's offense, Adam, death, what reigned? Right in that margin. What reigned? Death reigned. So unto the cross, death reigns. How? By Adam, by his sin. Death reigns by sin. So the law then is a ministration of what? Death. Thank you. We'll see that in Hebrews in a minute. Much more they which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. What is reigning now? Is this the kingdom age? No. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like a, we beat our heads against a wall sometimes. And what's reigning? Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Condemnation. Being condemned. Condemned unto death. Shut up to death all of our lifetime. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Verse 19, underline it again. For as by one man's disobedience, one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now watch it. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where grace, sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death. How does, how does sin reign? By death. Even so might what? Grace reign. Grace reign. Grace, grace, grace. Not the kingdom age. Grace. For he must reign until all our enemies are put under his footstool. So where's the grace? I am what I am, Paul said, by the grace of God. Where is it? It's in you. He must reign. That's the kingdom that is uh, by grace, not the kingdom age where Jesus is sitting on the throne for a thousand years. That's the kingdom age. This is not kingdom now. This is grace now, and it reigns by righteousness. Grace reigns by righteousness. Why? Because he went back to the Father. So how does grace reign? That grace might reign through, underline it, how? Righteousness. So how does grace reign? By righteousness. Thank you very much. And to eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. What are you trying to say, Brother Beard? I'm telling you right now that the strength of sin, that death, is by the law. And the law is the ministration of death. I'm saying that that sin reigns by death. And I'm saying that grace reigns by righteousness. Which way he must reign until all enemies are put under his footstool. Heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. Let me ask you a question. If heaven is his throne, where he is set, and the earth is his footstool, does that man fill heaven and earth? <laughs> 